Behind the Badge, brought to you by Big O Tires. As the Salt Lake City Police Department cracks down on crime, evidence piles up. So where do they keep it all? abc 4s Brian Carlson takes us into the evidence locker in tonight's Behind the Badge report. When police are holding on to thousands upon thousands of evidence they've collected for roughly 60 years, you expect to see a few interesting things in there. That is, if you can find them. Inside the Salt Lake Police Evidence Warehouse, officers are accumulating a large crime collection. All the brown boxes that you see are general evidence. Evidence technician Kimberly Crispin is the police custodian who for nearly 17 years has overseen the rows and rows of endless boxes and bags filled with items saved from decades of crime. Over 200,000 items of evidence in our warehouse right now. They circle around. Some evidence here going back as far as the 1960s, taken for murders, thefts, sexual crimes, drug busts and more. Currently housed inside roughly 250 bikes, 300 cases involving cash, scores of clothes, tools, items to do drugs. We must have two people to go into our drug room. And in the last year alone, 570 guns. That feels like a lot. It's overwhelming. <laughs> When you walk through here, you find any number of random things. A Huggies box full of sex magazines, someone's Kevlar vest, and a big fish made out of Louisiana license plates. If you could think of it, they've probably seen it here. What's the oddest thing you've ever seen? The oddest thing was this handful of sunflower seeds collected from the scene of a burglary. They were uneaten sunflower seeds left on the table by the suspect but I really don't understand the evidentiary properties of a handful of sunflower seeds. <laughs> like why someone would hold on to those? Don't know. For what Crispin does know of what's inside these aisles, most of it remains a mystery. He cannot just go into a report and read what's going on with the case. So when we receive items, most of it's packaged in a way that we cannot see what the items are. Officers first bring evidence into the packaging room, then it's bagged up and filed away until its court case is closed. But for items too big to fit in packaging, you can guess the crime. This is an interesting one. What is this right here? So part of the interesting part of our job is a lot of times we see the items, we don't always know the story behind them. So the best that I can give you on that is basement gambling is not allowed. So this is a gambling machine. <laughs> There's gambling machines. We have a few others in other places. Likely the warehouse's most famous piece of evidence was seen by the entire world in the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. That's a piece of the Olympic arch. From that, 2002? Mm -hmm. When the Olympic arch was taken down from the U of U football stadium, it was stored at City Impound Lot. Apparently at some point, some people had tried to break into the lot and were attempting to steal beams from the arch, and that was one of the items that was recovered. The possibilities of what's contained here could be endless. Police say, according to policy, anything they recover at a crime has to go into evidence. It could be a single dime that somebody says, this dime isn't mine, I didn't leave any change in my car, we have to book it into evidence. From filing cabinets to boxes stacked nearly 20 feet high. Since Salt Lake Police moved into this space in 2015, they now have room to store whatever officers find at the scene. The only thing that surprises Crispin about what's here is how much is here. The volume. I think the volume more than anything else. And these aisles are where all of it lives until police consider each case closed. So once a case gets closed, the evidence either gets returned to the owner, tossed out, or donated. So if you have something that's part of a case, they say your best chance at getting it back is knowing the serial number of the thing you want returned. You have no idea how many things like bikes, tools, or electronics go unclaimed because the owner just doesn't have a serial number. Back to you.